Well, Hong Kong is marking the 20th anniversary of the handover from British to Chinese rule. But tensions are high as China's president visits the territory for the first time as head of state. Pro-democracy activists are threatening protests involving hundreds of thousands of people. They say China has failed to live up to its promise of greater freedoms and democracy. Well, to get a sense of what Hong Kong is like now versus more than 20 years ago, I'm now joined by Andrea Chun. She's a lawyer and media commentator. She's also a freelance host with a local Chinese radio program here in Toronto. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about this anniversary. As we say, that there are mass protests that are being planned tomorrow to coincide with the visit of the Chinese president to Hong Kong. What is the expectation? What are protesters hoping to achieve here? Well, every year uh, it's been kind of an annual event now for July 1st, the handover. And this year it's hard to predict whether it will be another record. Uh, records were set in about 2013 after SARS and 2014 after the Occupy movement. Protesters, by, by and large, have a lot of different um, demands. Obviously, the ones would be um, higher democracy, freedom, uh, free the Nobel laureate, uh, Mr. Liu. Uh, and among others, local issues such as housing, the great divide between rich and poor. Since the 20th, uh, 20 years of a handover, I think this gap between the rich and the poor have really, really widened. So there are many, many social issues and local issues that, uh, among other issues, uh, protesters are demanding. This year is uh, particularly poignant because President Xi is in the colony or is, is in the uh, previous British uh, colony in the city. So I think they will really need to show President Xi what their demands are. On the other hand, there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of talk about their meeting points being moved and there'll be a lot of um, road closures and will the turnout really be as large as what organizers hope, hope to be? Um, it remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you talk about the, the growing disparity in wealth in Hong Kong, but when you make a, a broad stroke observation, is life better under Chinese rule versus under British rule 20 years after the fact? A recent poll that I've seen says that most Hong Kongers, 60%, uh, over 60%, think they're worse off. Now, there's a whole spectrum of what they consider to be worse off. Political freedoms, um, uh, personal freedoms, and economic uh, freedoms or economic uh, uh, prosperity. So I think if you ask such a broad question, it depends on who you speak to. The 5 or the 10 percent who are economically much better uh, off, much more wealthier, they may say that life is really great. Uh, we have enjoyed, by and large, all the freedoms that uh, China has promised. Whereas you talk to the other end of the spectrum, people are getting poorer. Uh, the young folks, they're very disenfranchised. I talk to the student activists. They're very unhappy about their freedoms. In the whole um, family situation, you could have the parents totally disagreeing with the younger generation as to what is happening in Hong Kong. But I think the polls do indicate that a lot of folks are not happy with the status quo. And when they compare 20 years ago, they feel that China has not... Um, has not really lived up to its promise. And this is a stark contrast because we see today with the uh, British Foreign Secretary, Mr. Boris Johnson, he reiterated the British uh, position that the joint declaration should be adhered to and that the uh, core values of Hong Kong being the free press, uh, independent judiciary, rule of law are fundamental to the success of Hong Kong. On the other hand, you see China's position, which is a completely different interpretation of the Joint Declaration. Today, they've come out to say that is a historic document, and one is not binding on the current administration. And therefore, we must uh, look at that document in this current context. So you can see here this contract or declaration or promise that was negotiated in the 80s and signed in the 80s by very, very different leaders back then and under very, very different terms and conditions as China now. You see this great rapid ascension of China into the world stage, mm -hmm. both uh, politically and um, economically. Mm -hmm. And then you contrast that with Hong Kong, a city who is relatively uh, free back in those days. And some would argue quite free, but you see you have um, the reporters without uh, borders saying that the uh, freedom of the press has been regressing rapidly. Um, you see this huge con contrast. Mm -hmm. And back then, in um, 1997, in the handover, Hong Kong ac accounted for 20% of the GDP of China. Now, it's only a bare 3%. So this huge uh, difference now compared to then, you can tell that 
to China, Hong Kong is eventually becoming one of its regular cities. Mm -hmm. Whereas for Hong Kong people, they are still insisting upon their promise. Um, and don't get me wrong, I think from China's perspective, it is very difficult, extremely difficult. For them, they see Hong Kongers as demanding more and more. They see that Hong Kong has been given a lot of freedoms, by and large, and water, food, um, money, uh, economic freedom. So they're saying, why are you still asking for more? That's yeah. a very, very different perspective. So interesting to, to note that those demands are still not met from one side, but as you say, the, the government in Beijing feels that they are meeting Hong Kong and giving Hong Kong more than enough. So uh, yes. thank you for that observation as we mark the 20th anniversary. And that is lawyer and media commentator Andrea Chun joining us live right here in studio.